guys, we'll carry on with chapter 2.3 um, with our examples, Some examples part B. And um, remember that what we're looking at in 2.3 is the vector addition of forces. Okay, just a, a reminder again that when we're dealing with forces, we're dealing with vectors, so we need to either remember that we're trying to always do two things in, in this section. Um, we're either trying to find the resultant of a number of force vectors or we're trying to find components of a resultant force or a, an applied force. So we've already um, discussed calculating or determining the resultants. That again, we need to understand the parallelogram Right, the parallelogram rule. We need to um, know how to work with the cosine and the sine rules as well. And we need to know basic trigonometry. We need to understand angles within triangles, angles within parallelograms. Okay, so go back and look at that video if you want to have a recap on how to find the resultant force vector of a number of vectors. But in this video, we are going to look at how to determine components of a, an applied force. So remember, so now we have some applied force here, and we want to determine what are the components of this force along two arbitrary axes. Okay? Uh, guys, this actually is an incredibly important video, in my opinion, okay? Because we... This is, it's very, very important for us to know how to resolve, resolve a force into its components. How to resolve a force into components along arbitrary axes. The reason why I use the term arbitrary axes is because um, probably from high school, if you've had a force here, you've generally most likely only worked in the XY plane with XY axes. Okay, so then how would you resolve those into their X and Y components? If you recall, you would do something like that. And remember, we would, you would project, you would project this force onto the X axis and you would project this force vector or this vector onto the Y axis. And you would get, um, you would get your components. But in real life, the axes that you want to determine the components along are not always perpendicular. They're often, like in this example, they're often at some arbitrary axes. Okay? Um, but we need to know that um, the parallelogram rule, again, is what allows us in all of these cases to determine what is the... What are the components? So, in this example here, which you're used to from high school, you also use the parallelogram rule. You just perhaps didn't know it. We, from the head there, we draw a line parallel. We draw a line parallel to the head. Sorry, parallel to the y-axis until it cuts the x-axis. And from there, we draw a line parallel to the x-axis until it cuts the y-axis. And there we have our two components. Okay. But now let's come to a real-life example. Okay. And I'm using one from the 11th edition. It's a 2.3 from the 11th edition. I'm, I'm just using this because it's something you, you haven't seen before and you don't have in your textbook, so um, perhaps something new. Okay. So what we see here is we see a member, A, B, and a member AC, and there, this, this member is, these members are attached to the wall at B and C, and we have an applied force of 500 Newton at some unknown angle theta, and that angle between the member A, B, and the wall is 30 degrees, okay? So, um, what they're asking, they're saying is that we have an applied force of 500 Newton, and they're saying, they're asking, uh, so they say the force F acting on the frame has a magnitude of 500 Newton 
and is to be resolved, okay, remember that word resolved, into two components, into two components acting along members A, B, and A, C. Okay, so this force is to be resolved into two components acting along members A, B, and A, C. All right? So take note, guys, what I spoke about earlier. We have a single force, and we need to resolve it into components along two <clears throat> arbitrary axes. There's the one axis. There is the other axis. Okay? Arbitrary axes. We have an applied force. We want to resolve it along two arbitrary axes. Okay? So that's what they want to know. Um, so this force of 500 newtons is to be resolved into two components elect, uh, acting along those two members. Determine the angle theta. Determine that angle. Okay? Measured below the horizontal so that the component FAC the component FAC, so this, this force here, that force in that member, is directed from A to C and has a magnitude of 400 Newton. Okay. All right, so you can pause the video if you want to have a look at this question and, and study it a bit longer, but I'm going to now do the, uh, the, the drawing, the vector drawing. Okay. So this is the 11th edition, and it's example... 2.3. Okay, so what we have here is we have member AC, no, that's AB, and we have member AC, and they're attached to the wall, and we have a force F here equal to 500 Newton, and there's this angle that we don't know what it is. This angle is 30 degrees. <coughs> okay. So the first step that we need to do, guys, let's just cordon that off there. The first thing that we need to understand, again, just like I discussed over here, is that we have a single force, and we want to resolve it into components along two, two axes, two arbitrary axes. So here's our force. There's our force. We know its magnitude is 500 Newton. And here is the one axis. I'm just going to draw, draw this line, just make it long like that, okay? There's that one, I'm just drawing that, and then there's this axis, okay? So now, okay, that's actually meant to be horizontal. Use your imagination, please, okay? So here is the applied force. This is the applied force. That's the applied force. And we want to determine the components along this direction and along that direction. How do we do it? If you think you know how, <clears throat> pause the video and then try to do it and then come back and see how we did it. Okay. All right. I'm so glad you paused the video and you tried it on your own. <clears throat> so the way that we do that, guys, is that we, from, again, remember, we are using the parallelogram method, We're using the parallelogram rule, from the head of the applied force, from the head, we draw a line parallel to the one axis until it cuts the other axis. We draw a line parallel to the one axis until it cuts the other axis. We draw a line parallel to the one axis until it cuts the other axis. Okay? Then, these then become our components, right? So, if let's think about this. If I apply a force of 500 Newton in this direction, what it's actually doing effectively in this direction is it's applying a force in this direction with that magnitude in that direction with that magnitude. At the same time, it's applying a force in that direction with that magnitude. Okay? So, practically what does this mean? It means that if we have a member here, right, that's a member and that's a member, like a beam, like a steel beam, a rod, anything. 
basically, if you're walking around, try to open your eyes to, to look at these members, okay? If I apply a force of 500 newtons in that direction, based on this um, calculation, or the, even this uh, vector diagram, what's actually happening is that there is a force being applied to this member, AB, and it is causing this member to be in tension because it's, it's applying a force in that direction. Remember, tension means you're stretching, you're, 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 it's, it's in tension, it's, there's a tensile load, there's a, it, it's, a, it's stretching that member, okay, because it's in that direction, so it means it's stretching that member, in, and then there's also, a, it, it, that causes there to be a force of that magnitude, that direction and that magnitude. At the same time, what is happening in, in member AC? What's happening in this member? Well, it's actually a compression force. Can you see that? This force of 500 Newton is causing a force to be applied to this member in that direction, which means it is compressing it and it has a magnitude of that. Okay, so guys, this is the first step. If you get this step wrong, then most likely everything else will be wrong. This is the first step, is to get this vector diagram correct. And then the next thing is for us then to put in the correct angles and calculate the magnitudes of the forces. But this is the first thing. Guys, conceptually, please try to understand conceptually what is happening. We are applying a force in this direction, but the result is that it's applying a tensile force, a, a tension force, along this member in this direction. Okay? And it's applying a force along this member in that direction. Okay? Now, we need to calculate the magnitudes and the angles. Remember that we don't know what that angle is, but we do know that that is a 30 degree angle. Okay? Now, the question stated, I just felt that that was very important just to discuss that. The question states that it wants us, it asks us to calculate this angle theta if this angle 500 produces a force of 400 Newton from A to C. Okay? So we already, just by doing our basic analysis we already knew without them having to tell us that there's a there's a force that the force is directed from a to c we could already analyze this situation and realize and determine that this force is directed from a to c okay but what they're saying is they want to know what is the angle theta if this 500 newton develops a force of 400 newton from a to c okay Again, we can use our sine rule, sine law, sine rule. Okay, we have our triangle. Okay. Um, we now need to figure out what these angles are. Okay, so how do we figure out what these angles are? Remember that that is a 30 degrees. That's 30 degrees and that is 90. So that becomes 60, okay, which means that that is 60 degrees there, and these are alternate angles, so that angle there is 60. I'm just going to repeat that. That's 30, 90, 60, right? That is 60 there, that's the same angle, and this is an alternate angle, so that's 60, and let's call this unknown angle phi, that unknown angle theta. Then let us use the sine rule for this to solve this problem so we know that that's that magnitude of that side is 400 so it's 400 over what would you say it is sine of phi sine phi equals what what's the next step how would you solve this right well we know that that is 500 there the the length of this line the magnitude of that is 500 divided by sine of 60. Okay, so we've got 400 over sine phi equals to 500 over sine 60. So if we calculate our phi, that is 
that turns out to be 43,9 degrees. So this angle here is 43,9 degrees. Okay? So, but the question was, what is the angle theta? Well, the angle theta is just then simply, if you add up all the angles within a, a triangle, you get 180 degrees. So, 180 degrees minus 60 minus phi, which is 43,9 minus theta should be zero. And then if you calculate theta, it should give you 76,1 degrees. And that is below the horizontal. Okay? So that's the answer there. What is that angle? So what did we need to know to solve this problem? We needed to know how to resolve graphically the components into their, sorry, the resolve the force into components along two arbitrary axes. That's the first thing. We needed to understand the parallelogram method. Then we needed to, um, we needed to see that they said that this force was 400, this force was 500. We needed to calculate that that angle is 60 degrees. Then we needed to use the sine rule to determine what what is phi, and then angles within a triangle. Okay, so that's the answer. But another thing which I think is, is actually quite um, new, perhaps, to our understanding is I want to ask you, go and calculate what is the force acting along this member. Basically, what is that force there? What is the magnitude of that force? Well, how would you do it? You would use, if I'm not mistaken, no, you would use the sine rule again. You would use the sine rule. So that force there is that, is that there, right? So the length of that uh, vector is the length of that vector. So let's try it. Let's say, um, let's call it F, FAB, right? Because that's the force that's acting along that member at the magnitude. Over, what would you say? We would say sine of theta, but we calculated theta to be 76,1 degrees. And we could use either 400 over sine phi or 500 over sine 60. So let's just, doesn't really matter. Let's use 500 over sine 60. And if we calculate FAB, we will see, oops, sorry. We will see, if we calculate FAB, 500 divided by sine of 60 times sine of 76.1, we will see that we end up with 560 comma 4, if I'm not mistaken. 560 comma 4. Yeah, that's right. Okay? Now, guys, what I would really appreciate that you do in this course and in all the courses is look at the result and critically evaluate what, what's actually happening. Do you notice that the applied force is 500 Newton? But the force that the, one of its components acting along this direction is 560. So do you see that this force, this force of 500, causes a force of a magnitude that's larger than it to, to occur in this member? Okay? So that is, that is something quite interesting. In, in school, you probably always saw that the component was less than the, this resultant. The components, the magnitude of these components was always less than the resultant. But in real life, you apply a force, it's possible that one of the components could actually end up being larger than the applied force. Okay, so that, that I felt is something um, worth knowing and something to look out for. Okay, so I hope this helps. Thanks, guys. Cheers.